Hi, welcome to the Denver YouTube professionals. Increase subscribers and screen share like a bear. Uh, before I get started, I would like to take a minute to call in the light. Before I start or make any video for myself, I like to set an intention so that I, I set up a dartboard and, and I put it behind the camera lens and that my words are like darts going towards that target. My expressions are all going towards the same end result and it gives me a more focused stream of thought and progression of ideas. So I know that by setting an intention that's grounded in my big why that it's even more powerful because it's the thing that I'm called here to do. And I know that if everyone practices this same technique, that they'll also make really incredible videos. It's jumping to the center. It's taking your center out of your chest and it's putting it behind the lens of the camera so that everything you're expressing is going in the same direction. And I know that my big why is my mission in life. It is to create successful teams by helping people. And I know that I can do that in a group setting or that I can do that one-on-one. -on -one. And, and I can do that right here, right now, by, by just knowing that all of this content that I've gathered and procured over the, the past three years will help you increase subscribers on your YouTube channel. I'm confident of that. This is the same technique that Tony Robbins use, uses, Jim Carrey, uh, Les Brown and Michael Jordan. It's just a, a pep you up uh, practice. And, and so thank you for sitting th with that through me on this, this uh, calling in the light. Um, actors, newscasters, and even church ministers do the same Michael thing. Jordan. So I don't want you to think that just anybody can jump in front of the camera without doing the work, putting the work in on the back end. It does take some practice. And so that's what I, I'm glad I was able to just start it off with. Um, today, we've got an exciting subject. It's called Increase Subscribers and Screen Share Like a Bear. And I would like to mention that this is the fastest growing YouTube group in Colorado. And so if you take a minute right now to share this uh, link to your social media pages. We'd love your social media love. Um, we've done some interesting shows in the past, like uh, the power of the Google virtual reality kit, uh, emotional intelligence behind the camera. We've done how to be your own best video spokesperson, and most recently, how to rank on the first page of Google in 30 minutes or less. My name's Anthony Pritchard, and whether you're in the audience or you're watching from home, uh, we'll be talking today about a lot of software programs that are still in beta. I mean, they're unproven. But we're going to attempt to prove how they work live. So bear with us if you run into any technical difficulties. Uh, again, crossing to the concept of why this activity is worth your time. Number one, video is the most sought after content. If you're to think about buying a new television and pulling out the, the remote control, ask yourself, would you rather look through that pamphlet of step-by-step -step instructions or would you rather have a step-by-step -step video that you can just start and stop as you experiment with your, your new electronic equipment? I mean, uh, for me, it just makes sense to let somebody guide me through this, this massive you know, amount of information instead of me having to go hunt and peck for it and experiment with it myself. Second, because being the authority is the number one way to attract people to your brand, your idea, or your solutions. And we can think about it uh, as if you were to hire someone to fix your kitchen. You wouldn't just hire any old Tom, Dick, or Harry. 
you would want to hire somebody who has proven to you that they can confidently repair and remodel the kitchen and that you're not going to have any more problems once they walk away. Um, a story about authority is about the widow and the sheep. The widow had one sheep that was, that was left to her after this uh, widowing and um, she, she wanted to save some money. So she decided she was going to shear the wool off of the sheep herself. And, and, and she started to shear it so close because she wanted to get all the wool that the sheep started bleeding. And so the sheep said to the widow, you know, is, that, is my blood going to add any more weight to the wool that you harvest from my body? And, and, the, and the moral of the story is no, because... If, she, if the sheep died because she didn't do a good enough job, then she really would have lost a lot of money. The moral of the story is when you want to get something done right and you're not sure how to navigate through those waters, hire a professional because you're going to end up actually saving money compared to killing your sheep. <laughs> uh, and number three, video speaks volumes. If a picture says a thousand words, then a video can say a thousand. 100,000 words, or maybe even a library, because body language speaks 80% more effectively than the spoken word or than, than simple text. Can I see a show of hands of anybody in the room that believes that video is a powerful tool for their business? That is most everybody in the room. And and that's awesome. I've got an example of how powerful video is. This is the story of Mike Dubin. He was a page at NBC. And he delivered videos and he sat in a cubicle and he worked for these big network producers. And he found fertile ground with a friend of his at, you know, I think they were at a party, he said. And he came up with the idea to to start this razor company and, and circumvent the only other access we had to, to men's razors, which was you know, the grocery store. So watch this example of how Mike produced 12,000 orders in 78 hours and made more than a million dollars in less than six months. Hi, I'm Mike, to, to founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? So well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Produced 12, yeah, orders in a dollar. Hours Are the blades any good? No. More than a million dollars in less than Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera <laughs> lubricating strip <laughs> and a pivot head. <laughs> it's so gentle, a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. Yeah. I'm good at tennis. Do you think your razor yeah, no, we got is vibrating yeah, no. with a flashlight, back scratcher, and ten blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you. Yeah, no, we got we're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. No Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I know karate, I know jiu-jitsu, I drive like a gay so when I'm coming to see you. So Mark was wildly successful because he realized that there was fertile ground for this business idea and that it was a very focused audience. You'll notice by the way he uh, did this video that he was really only talking to one niche demographic in the United States. It was a young, uh, athletic male that doesn't really care about cuss words and wants to save a few bucks instead of go to the grocery store. And he, he created this video that was 
perfect for this audience and they resonated with it at a high level and they took action immediately. And that's the same thing you can do. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. The three things, how to use your webcam to create authority in your little corner of the world for exactly what you do, how to publish it, and then how to cross promote it and syndicate it all over the internet so that as many people see it as possible and that are introduced to you and the problems you solve and the brand that you represent. So would anyone like to stand up and tell us if they have used this technique so far and what kind of results they may have gotten from it? Anyone in the audience use your webcam to make videos? Didn't anticipate no one putting their hand up. Okay, there's a few. Uh, do we have Phil Donahue to run the microphone? No. Uh, can you go tap him on the shoulder for me, assistant producer? There we go. Okay. Scoop, we need you to run the microphone. Great. Okay, it's coming around. Be patient. Scoop's birthday today, by the way. Give him a round of applause, Scoop. He's 35. How you doing? Carlin has a question. Uh, I mean, she has a result of the. Uh, well, I haven't used you. I haven't done a shared YouTube video with anyone. I've just used my webcam to record myself. Does that okay. count? Yeah, that counts. Have you showed your desktop or just yourself? What do you mean? Well, you can. Share your desktop screen with some of these technologies we're showing I today. Am, I really actually don't know how to do most of this. I thought it was okay. a big deal that I made a video and uploaded it, and it was successful. Yeah, okay, so those are the kind of results we want to hear. Yeah. What, what kind of success did you have by uploading a video? Um, a lot. Uh, I created a video a couple years ago after losing my two front teeth in an accident, mm -hmm. and um, used a couple keywords and attached my blog to it and it's gotten over the last two years almost 8,000 views and wow. people from around the world seem to be looking to connect with someone else that's lost their teeth wow. and it helps people. Wow, so that is another big uh, key indicator of creating a successful video that I'm aware of is getting a little bit vulnerable in front of the camera. And you definitely had to do that if you were missing your front yeah, teeth. I, well, I had my teeth in and then took them out halfway through to, oh, to wow. show the comparison. Awesome. It was fun. Great These are job. permanent now, though, to everybody. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Anybody else have a similar story of uploading a video and having success? Well, Anthony, you um, made a video um, of using the my detox product. Uh -huh. and. Um, not only did several hundred people look at it on my site, but it went viral on the Touchstone Essentials site for the whole company and everybody loved it and oh. lots of comments about how much they enjoyed you. That's great, Vicki. Yeah, Vicki and I have worked together. Thanks for coming down to watch the show, Vicki, and thanks for that testimonial. We're gonna talk about testimonials at the end of the show as a very effective video for you to upload. And that's just a testament right there. In the back, Hi, Anthony. Hi. Is that working? Yeah, it's working. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, my name's Sophia Rose, and um, I've had my YouTube station for three years, and um, I upload videos a lot. <laughs> um, they're about ASMR, and I only really do uh, videos of my hands, because mm. I'm kind of chicken to get in front <laughs> of the camera. <laughs> And what kind of results have you had, Sophia? Um, great results, actually. Uh, I have very close to 50,000 subscribers. Oh, wow. And um, I think my uh, video where I'm drawing, um, just you just see my hands drawing, um, has uh, very close to 2 million views. Oh, wow. That's incredible. See, finding that niche audience, even if it's something you've never heard of before, is very powerful. Has anyone else in the audience heard of ASMR? There's no hands up here. Oh, one person, okay. So it's a rare thing, a rare audience, but still has a high demand for content. So if you can find one of those niche audiences, you can blow it out of the water just like Sophia did. For me, it's the big three. 
for me, it's reach, relevance, and repetition. Relevance being, I want to be the highest result, the most most relevant result for somebody who's, exact, who's looking for the exact problem that I solve. So if you type in YouTube for business in Denver, I show up. That is how, what I've procured over the last three years because I, I recognized early on that there was a demand uh, for YouTube in business that was headed my way. And so over the past three years, I've continued to publish video after video talking about the different types of ways that businesses can use YouTube to funnel traffic to their website, to, to magnetize this demand for YouTube business information to my website. And I know that it works because I practice it every day, and it's the same thing that I teach my clients. Reach because it works like a pebble in the pond. If I claim that space here in Denver, who's to say I, I wouldn't also be very relevant to somebody in Wyoming or in Vail or you know in in Oklahoma or Omaha or or uh, New New uh, what's it called down there south where they have the uh, New Mexico place? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> we don't go down there very much. Uh, because, because if I can show someone that I've, I've produced results, then I can just record those results that I've produced and let other people see me and the evidence that I can do what I say I can do. And, and repetition, the more fresh you are with your content, the more, the more it's going to be a, a good result for somebody who's looking for that. So. I've passed around uh, a sheet that has a lot of these different screen share activities, and I just want to do a rundown uh, of the bullets. And I forgot to get a, one of them myself. Marty, can you um, please uh, uh, hand me that? Thank you, sir. And, and if you might, wouldn't mind replacing that. <laughs> the first one on the list is Skype. And, and maybe I can just bring these up, Mofo, while... Uh, well, so you've got something to, to, to flip to. <coughs> Skype is obviously the oldest webcam screen sharing technology. And it started 12 years ago. And the premium option allows you to actually share your desktop. Well, well since they've held that as a premium option, other companies have come in and said, we're going to offer that for free to attract more users. But it's a really good way to use your mobile device or your computer to communicate with someone all over the world. And it's proven that it's, it's got a really good value proposition because it stood the test of time. I don't know if anybody else has had any friends or family member tra inter travel inter internationally, but this is probably a really good inexpensive thing to use to communicate with those family members. Um, second was... Google Hangouts. And Google Hangouts is a combination of Google Talk, Google Voice, Google Plus, and Google Messenger. And they claim that it is the future of telephony. The, the one hitch or the one, I guess, issues that I've seen users have with Google Hangouts is the recording piece. You can easily jump on and share your webcams and your, your desktop with one another, but Recording that transaction, that interaction, is, isn't exactly a one-click solution in Hangouts. And that's why you've got these other um, additional or complementary uh, softwares that you can use on your desktop, like Screencast-O-Matic or Camtasia. And I'll get to those in a minute. Next on the list is GoToMeeting. GoToMeeting was really designed for like your corporate one-to-many uh, lessons. Instead of having to fly all over the country to get together with top executives, GoToMeeting is their tool that has a high level of security that allows them to share this 
this proprietary information without worrying about anyone tapping into it and keeping it private. Join.me is a subsidiary <laughs> of LogMeIn. And join.me is very easy. It doesn't require any downloads. You can use it straight through the web and you can uh, share screens and audio with one another as you maybe do some, uh, maybe your, your computer repair technician uses this. Maybe your network solution provider uses this to help you navigate through your computer because our computers have so much information in them. It's just like that manual, right? We don't want to go through that, that 20 page manual. We'd rather pay somebody t a nominal fee to help us get straight to the solution. And Periscope. Twitter CEO Dick Consult Constolo acquired Periscope directly after the smash hit of Meerkat last year at South by Southwest. Now, South by Southwest is going on right now. And if you remember a year ago, the big hit was Meerkat. And, and I think he threatened to, to take Meerkat down because it was really just taking over Twitter. And his solution was to buy up this application called Twitter that was being, or Periscope that was being developed to, to combat that and to just to give it more space on, on his platform. And now it may be the, the largest or the widest, widest used smartphone web broadcaster. So you can broadcast from live any information. And I think that's why the founder made it because he was in a foreign country or he was, he was wanting to discover news in a foreign country and he couldn't get the news that he was looking for. So he just he developed this app. Next is Blab. Blab's very intuitive. It's easy to use. And vlogger Joel Com says it's the most user friendly. Some of us in this room know Joel. He's a good vlogger. He kind of follows the, uh, the, the Gary Vaynerchuk crush it mentality, and he is all about repetition. Guy is making videos left and right out of his living room. God love him. Uh, my all-star pick is Zoom.us. Zoom is my pick because it has fewer technical difficulties than Blab, and it's, it's a really s short download. It's the, called a thin client for your desktop that allows you to share your webcam or your desktop, toggle between views, whether it's side by side, stacked on top, or uh, large screen and small screen. This is a great way for people to now recognize that they've got the ability to enter into this global marketplace. Whatever you do here locally, you can now do for someone all over the world because you can share your screen, you can show them how to do what they want to do, you can even record that, and that's I think the biggest standout for Zoom is that it allows you to easily record the screen shares that you conduct. So next is a really fun one, it's called FaceRig. It uses a combination of motion capture and face recognition to turn your face into a cartoon character. So now you can send like a, a videogram to your sweetheart or your friends or family and put a smile on their face by talking through the animation and movement of an animal that you create. You can now be your own avatar. And <coughs> who knew? <laughs> Next is Nom, the co-founder of YouTube. Steve Chin started Nom as a resource to, to collect cooks and chefs, people who like to create things in their kitchen. And it's a favorite for people who like to learn from chefs, brewmasters, grill masters, baristas, or bloggers. Twitch is the largest, largest streaming platform for gamers to reveal their secrets and their success with their gaming. And Camtasia is that software created by TechSmith to help you edit and record any of these other 
webcam screen sharing tools that don't come with an onboard recording uh, tool in already inside of it. Camtasia does cost, I think they give you 30 days free to try it out. They've come out with the version two already and it costs $300 lifetime for that tool, but it's, it's been known for years as the, the number one way to produce or monetize your videos on the internet because there's sort of two walls uh, for using video on the internet. There's, there's the introduction or the inspiration wall. There's the magnetism wall where you produce this free content and you publish it into the world. And then you offer a higher level experience with the transformation side or the paid side. If you think about anything you've done in life, you've been more serious about those things that you've paid for. And those things that you've signed up for for free, you've maybe not really focused that much of your own personal attention on because you weren't serious enough about it to actually pay the money. But for anybody who's done some personal development and who's paid a large amount of money to you know, evolve into their higher self, right? to, to learn what, what is that true you know, inner whisper of their heart has, has probably paid some good money to, to go and experience that. And that's what Camtasia has given so many creators over the last five years. Screencast-O-Matic is a free screen recording software that claims to get even more awesome at $15 a year. It doesn't come with editing like Camtasia, but I wanted to throw that in there for these other things. And, and next we're moving down to these mobile screen sharing devices. Now, several of these others have mobile applications. In fact, I think all of them have mobile applications, but these, these next few are focused mainly for mobile use. Uh, FaceTime, was made available in 2010 on the iPhone and iPad, but is only still available on iOS devices. And it's a very convenient, fast way to do video conferencing, video calling with anybody one-on-one. -on -one. Tango is the 12th most downloaded app with over 200 million registered users, built for speed and fun, works on both platforms, iOS and Android. I don't know if anybody's used Tango, but there's some fun games you can play like tic-tac-toe on there. So if you get bored at talking to each other and looking at each other's faces, you can start to play these games with one another. And, and you know, it makes the conversation more interesting, doesn't it? Uh, next, if you want to record the video that you take on your smartphone, you can use these next two devices. REC period, as it's known. Counts down from 10 so that you can get ready for the record and it records up to five minutes, but the audio only lasts for 30 seconds with the free version. And next is Shoe. It's still in beta and it comes with many of the features that the others don't. There's no time limits, uh, but I imagine there is a limit based on how much storage your phone can collect. I think a lot of us you know, don't get in the regular habit of taking those images and video files off of our smartphones and transferring them onto maybe our external hard drive. One solution I do know that's good for that is Google Photos. If, if you haven't downloaded Google Photos yet, I really recommend it because it, hoard, it stores unlimited amount of images and videos in the cloud for you to then use later on. It also comes with a, a video editing assistant so I highly recommend those. And on the back side, we've got syndication best practices. So once we've created this video with one another, whether it's uh, an interview or it's a how-to or um, maybe it's just uh, a conversation about a subject that both parties add, add value to, what do we do next? Well. The first place that I would obviously recommend would be YouTube because it is the world's largest video repository. It is known as Universal University. Over four million hours of content are uploaded to YouTube every month and over 400 million people use YouTube every day. 
You know, there was 100 million people that watched the Super Bowl, 112, 120, uh, last month. But 400, pe- that 400 million people watch YouTube every day. So it's a great place to get found by people who are looking for you. This is the search repository. If Facebook is good for sharing information with, with the demographic of people that you've already procured, then YouTube is the best place for sharing your content with people who've never heard of you before, but who are looking for solutions that you provide. So title your videos properly and people from all over the world will find them as the most relevant result. Now, once you've uploaded your video with the right uh, indexing and you know, in the, in the description below, I'm going to put a link to that YouTube professional show we did two months ago called how to rank on the first page of Google in 30 minutes or less, because I go through everything step by step on how to properly upload and index that video so that you will rank on the first page of Google, which is the world's largest search engine and the world's most popular website. And and so we use that link to properly upload it. I will tell you this, when you upload your YouTube video, you've got 48 hours to build a quality score. And that's really how Google was built, on this thing called quality score. Google knew that people would continue to use its search engine if it produced what they were looking for, if it gave them what they wanted. And and it it indicated what they wanted with this thing called quality score, a a ranking of one to 10. How relevant is this piece of content? Is this blog? Is this video? Is this uh, podcast compared to what the person typed in? And Google knows that video is what people want. So it throws a video asset to the highest level of result rankings because they've already done the beta testing. They know that people would rather watch video. Then you can take that link, that YouTube link, you can share it with a personal email. You probably know a dozen people who would watch that video. Those are extra views that you need within that first 48 hours. Share that link with those people through a private email. Take the time to write 12 personalized email addresses inviting people to watch that video because you think they'll benefit from it. Next is blast email, which is a little bit less effective, but continuing to update people does have its value if you are looked at as a resource for what you do in your brand. Next is Facebook. I don't recommend publishing a YouTube link on Facebook because they're, they're kind of in this little tug of war battle to see who's going to be the most uh, popular video resource. And, and so it, it kind of under promotes YouTube links. I would highly recommend uploading your same video file to Facebook natively. And then of course, tagging the person that you may have made the video with or um, sharing it with your friends through instant messenger, uh, sharing it in groups that you may belong to, and you can even boost it if you have a business page on Facebook. And it also lets you target the people who you think are going to most value from from this video. And that's another way for you to introduce yourself to people who may, may never have heard of you before. Next is Vimeo, which is really good for publishing videos on your website because it gives you more flexible options for the video player. It has autoplay. Um, It comes in a cleaner box. It doesn't have advertisements that pop up afterwards that you're going to need to, uh, you know, embed difficult code to eliminate. Vimeo is a great tool for you to use that also is, has been dominated by traditional filmmakers. Uh, Traditional filmmakers use video because, Vimeo because it allows them to provide private access to their video edits. So when somebody produces a film for a business, there's a first draft, there's a second draft, there's a third draft, and the video producer doesn't want to give that away until they've received final payment. So they'll give you password access to the video until you approve the final video. Then once you approve, you'll have to pay them 
and then they'll allow you to download it. Next is BuzzFeed. This is one of my favorites because I think it resonates with my demographic. I mean, it's a younger audience. It's a, a more aggressive audience, maybe a more a comical audience, but you can definitely post your, your blogs and your videos in these uh, in this ability to you know, publish on BuzzFeed. So create your own profile in BuzzFeed and share your videos there and see what kind of traction you get. BuzzFeed's doing a great job with magnetizing their own audience because the videos that they make are just really impactful. They're answering the questions that people have in an interesting way. Next is Flickr. Flickr is, YouTube, is Yahoo's video tool. It started as a place for you to share your images and has evolved into a place for you to share your video on YouTube. You know, another place for you to just upload a, a video and to link back to the other resources that you have, like your website or uh, your Facebook page. Next is Break.com, a central library for many smaller independent network creators and series. If your video is featured on the home page, you can earn $600. So check out break.com. And finally, Wistia, positioning themselves as the video marketing platform for business. Wistia claims to have a more user-friendly video analytics tool. So instead of having to learn how to use Google Analytics, it comes already ready to go in Wistia. If you use Wistia to, to publish your videos on your website, you can see how long people have watched them, um, how many people watch them, and if they use the interactive buttons on the video to do what you wanted them to do. Great, so that is the, the rundown of how to make a webcam screen share video, how to publish it, and then how to syndicate it all over the internet just as if you were your own newscasting room. Next, we have my favorite section of the show called The Local Scene with Scoop Nemeth. Scoop, take it away. Next, we have my favorite section of the show. If it's not the one thing, then it's another. Scoop. Here at the Denver YouTube Professionals, and today, the thing we're talking about on the local scene is the Colorado State Library libraries with green screens and Chromecast. My name is Brian Scoop Nemeth, broadcast journalism major and entrepreneurship minor at Metro State University of Denver. I've been a member here at Denver Open Media for the past four years. The way I see it, you've got two options. One, you can hide in a cave under your blankets and pretend that this video revolution is not happening. Or you can screen share like a big, bad, ugly, grizzly bear. If you could have a YouTube channel and use that camera and utilize the power of screen sharing, what would your show be about? Crazy cat videos. <laughs> about crafting and making. Top five paranormal activity videos, dude. Pretty cool. And beards. beards. Absolutely beards. Yeah. Actually, I just started a show about um, <laughs> about like crafting and honing your, your skills. So um, that. <laughs> and honing what kind of skills? Um, well, it's called Keep Sharp, and my last name is Sharp, so um, it's, it's about crafting and making, and um, I showed off a quilt that I made, and I'm a graphic designer, so I showed off some patterns and stuff that I've created. Um, my friend um, actually has a channel as well, and she has more followers than me, and she talked about me on there, and now I have more followers. As an educator, I use uh, YouTube in my classroom at a variety of capacities, whether it's uploading or to share uh, learning communities with students or knowledge, things like that. So what I use on YouTube is um, breathing techniques. It's actually very serious. It's, uh, let's take a deep breath together. What do you say? Ready? Feels good. One, two, three. When do we exhale? Go for it. There it 
is. That's what we're talking about here today, people. How can you increase subscribers by using the webcam that's already embedded in your computer? And after all of this, the question still remained, what is a bear? I don't know. I don't know what you mean by that. Well, they scare me. Bears. I'm a bear. A bigger otter. <laughs> Thanks for hitting the streets like a total Yukon polar bear, SG Sharp Knife. I think you totally pulled some people out of hibernation early this year. Government agencies are known for being slow to adapt to new technology, but I found a YouTube channel that is changing that stereotype. Let's check in on Ashley Kaziyaka from the Colorado State Library to see if her porridge is too hot, too cold, or if it's done just right. Mm. There is a uh, a printed step-by-step -step tutorial that lives on our creation and learning website, which is just create.coloradovirtuallibrary.org, um, and that's virtual library with two L's, and um, that will give you a step-by-step walkthrough of how to do some of these more advanced things, um, and you can feel free to copy it and use it in your library, no worries. Finally, we're getting smarter. And we're realizing that most of the things we need to do can be done with the device we carry around in our pockets. And as thought leaders, we're using our smartphones in ways no one imagined was possible five years ago. Chromecast is a $35 box that lets you plug into any TV with an HDMI outlet and it lets you project anything on your phone onto your big screen TV. In addition, Google Slides natively supports Chromecast. That way, teaching people no longer requires a projector, a clicker, and a laptop. Teach your YouTube followers with more visually appealing graphic slides and use your smartphone as a clicker and a slide deck all in one. Today is March 11th and Monday is March 14th. Do you know what that means? This Monday is the annual celebration of Pi, the mathematical formula for calculating the volume of a circle. Our sponsor, Infinitus Pi, is celebrating this intellectual holiday with three 14 cheese pies and a video competition where the best pie video gets 314 pies off Pete's Pizza Pie Truck. Thanks for sponsoring the Denver YouTube Professionals Meetup Group, Pete. Squeal Rum is the new sponsor we brought in this month. Tell J.P. Krause what you think of this happy hour mix. It's happy hour here in Broncos country. And I personally want to thank everyone who came in to watch the show from our audience and everyone who's watching this show live on YouTube and Comcast Cable 57. Denver Open Media is a community membership organization that gives you access to million dollar studios, high quality camera equipment, and media education that you can use to communicate your message effectively and more powerful. Talk to Ann Tice about membership if you're ready to come out of your cave and share like a bear. And that's what it's all about for this edition of the YouTube local scene. I'm Scoop Nemeth. See you next time. Raise your hand if you love Scoop Nemeth and the local scene. Isn't that great? I just love people 
working with people who are so passionate about achieving success, and I appreciate you, Scoop Nemeth. Before we conclude the show, I wanted to do a live demonstration of this screen share webcam technology. And this has never been conducted here before in the studio. And so I hope we don't end up in a warp black hole and, and sucked in you know, to space. Because uh, what we're going to do is open up Zoom right now. And we're going we're gonna to navigate around. And then we're going we're gonna to throw it back to your co-host, SG Sharp Knife. So here I've got the Zoom open. Yep, there's Sh Sharp Knife. Hey, Sharp Knife. Hey, what's going on out there, Anthony? Hey, well, I wanted to toggle through a few of these to do that demonstration. Did that change your screen too? I didn't see any change. No, I can okay. See you, well, it did for mine, and I think the people in the audience can see there that we've got a little side by side. Um, another way that it can record is one on top of the other. Uh, we've got a question in the back there, Scoop. Would you mind running um, the. What is Zoom? Zoom.us is this tool that I'm using right now. This allows me and SharpKnife to use our webcams and to share our screens. So I just hit share my screen, and um, now I'm going to show uh, my YouTube channel. And, and this is actually the, the Denver YouTube Professionals Facebook channel. I don't know if you found out about us through this channel, but quite possibly. And, and so now I can take somebody and, and navigate them through this information, even if they were in Malaysia. Are you in Malaysia, SG? No, uh, no I'm no, actually okay. back in the control room here and, uh, okay. for Studio just A. Just give me a minute, SG. Media. We're going to stop sharing my screen, and then we're going to go back to you. And, and, and as soon as I hit record, okay, does it show up on your end as anything different? I see a red flashing recording icon, so I think we're doing good. Can okay. You hear me? Great. Well, now that we're recording, why don't I throw it back to you in the control booth and let you take it from there? Hey, Anthony, check it out. I, I did something I've never done before in my entire life. I renamed my hard drive. So uh, introduce us to the people you've got there in the control room, SG. Hang on one second here. So. Yeah, this is where the magic happens. If you can see, this is all the equipment that we're using back in uh, the control room of Studio A. And this is, this is where the magic happens. This is where everything happens. If it wasn't for these guys sitting right here, the magicians, we wouldn't be seeing this right now. So I just want to shout it out right here to producer MoFo. Everyone, big hands up. And then on the sound, we've got Vincent. And nice. uh, Vincent is Successful the reason why you that can one off. hear me. Anything else to close it out? Hey, so I, I, if you can hear me, I changed my hard drive name to Dad Ass. What's, it, well, why did you call it that? Well, so I figured this would make sure that I would definitely back up Dad Ass every week. Oh, I get that message on my computer. Got screen, it. Got and it. And the then you remember always, to back yes, it up a little always, bit more. Yes. Got it. So. Well, well, thanks for uh, taking over the hosting of the control booth there. I can see you've got Vincent and Stitches back there. <laughs> we'll see you back in Studio A in a few minutes. Back at you, Anthony. Take care. So then I just stop the recording, and I end the meeting. And by ending the meeting, it automatically takes that video recording and produces an MP4 file. So I can take that MP4 file. I can edit it in iMovie which is free on Apple, or Windows Movie Maker, which is free on Windows. Meeting, and by ending the meeting, and it then automatically takes that Can you ask me to turn down my feedback? And produces an MP4 file. So I can take that MP4 file, at this I moment, can edit it. What they're going to do in the, the end piece is they're going to edit Maker, this piece out. So you're experiencing meeting. dead space and right now. Meeting, this really doesn't exist, or does it? <laughs> so that is my live demonstration of the webcam screen share. Um, I've done this uh, a few times successfully, and I've gotten really great results from it because I've been able to pull in those other experts in my industry. I've been able to use them as leverage 
And we were able to cross promote this video piece that we made together and infuse each other with our different following. A certain number of the experts followers will, will discover me and a certain number of my followers will discover her. That's how we increase subscribers on our YouTube channel. And that's only reiterated with YouTube Creator Academy, which is the number one thing they teach you is to increase subscribers, is to collaborate with other YouTubers. The people you're sitting next to are other YouTubers who are at your same level. It doesn't make sense for us to collaborate with other YouTubers like PewDiePie and James Wedmore. They are, they've already succeeded at collecting hundreds of thousands of subscribers and they're probably not interested in us who has a hundred or maybe, well, some of us have thousands in the audience, but for the most of us, we're just getting this YouTube channel off the ground and this is a great way to do it. Uh, and if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll notice I have under 100 as well. And so many so people would ask me, Anthony, well, who do you think you are to stand up there and do a YouTube show if you don't even have 100 subscribers? And my only answer is that I've, this is the fifth YouTube channel that I've started. And, and it wasn't a goal of mine to increase subscribers until, until just now. And, and so you're watching it unfold naturally and you know, I'm just compelled to stand up here and tell you what I've done to, to do that. So the last piece of our segment is the practice segment. And I've got a little card being passed around to help you with this piece. Now, on the Denver YouTube Professionals, we do three things. Our mission is to use YouTube to increase traffic to our business. And one of the ways that uh, has been demonstrated in this audience already is with a video testimonial. In the past, I've seen other professional filmmakers try to attempt to collect video testimonials unsuccessfully because the person that they're interviewing gets scared to, to all the hell that the camera's in front of their face. And they start worrying about the words that are coming out of their mouth because they're all of a sudden exposing themselves to judgment by the entire world. Well, at this moment, we, we need to recognize that we, we are a little worried about what people are going to think about us and what they're going to say. Because, because by getting more visibility, we, we're naturally exposing ourselves to all judgment. But it's really, it's really, the, it's really our intention to, to only talk to the people who are most interested in learning from us. And that's about one-fourth or 25% of the population would, would probably be the extent or the limit to the people that you would have the ability to impact. And, and so, you know, when, when this nervous feeling comes up, you know, what do I do? I needed a way to help people get out of their head and to get into their heart so they weren't worried about the words that were coming out of their mouth but they were just interested in delivering upon the experience that they just received. So whether you recognize it or not, you just had an experience with two different companies. Um, you had an experience, or we, let's call them organizations. You had an experience with the Denver YouTube professionals, and you had an experience with Infinitus Pizza Pie. So by using this simple three-step process, and I'm gonna pull it up here for producer Mofo, I've created the testimonial sandwich, which helps, helps people deliver a one minute video testimonial flawlessly every time. So I've actually coached people to do this for over two years now, and I finally come up with a handy place card that they can just hold in their hands so they, they don't have to worry about memorizing the three steps of the video testimonial sandwich. The first, there's two pieces of white bread with meat in the middle. The first piece of bread, or the first step, is the who, what, and the where. Who are you, what are you doing, and where are you? The meat is the experience. It's what did you get out of this? And it can be the before and after. It's, it could be what you thought you were going to get coming into it and what you actually got out of it. And then finally, the third step, the, the, 
other piece of white bread is your call to action. What are you going to do next? Or what do you think others should do next to have a similar experience that you have? And this is what makes it so easy. So I'm going to demonstrate it for you all. And then I'd like to invite you all to take a forth this practice piece of our, of our meetup group and do one for either the pizza company or the Denver YouTube professionals. And remember, you don't have to publish it. But you are going to learn a lot about what you look like on camera if you've never done this before. Okay, so, uh, and I'm rolling in three, two. Hi, my name's Anthony Pritchard, and I'm here at the Denver Open Media Studios conducting our meetup group called Increase Subscribers, Screen Share Like a Bear. And I just had the most delicious pizza from our sponsor, Infinitus Pizza Pie. I love the sauce. I love the, the crust. You know it's not frozen. And so if you're somebody who's hungry for pizza, and hungry for YouTube information, I invite you to come to the next Denver YouTube Professionals Meetup Group on May 12th. I'll see you there. 40, 41 seconds. And it, I didn't have to think about what I was going to say. I just thought about the steps. So I'll invite you to partner up with the person you're sitting next to and ask each other your phones. Hold the phone for the person if they like Because you know, the more you give, the more you get. And it has to start with you if you're interested in, in getting more of this attention and visibility and awareness of what you do. Be in the law of reciprocity and give without any expectations of receiving anything in return. And, and just watch what happens. Just, just experiment and see what happens. Remember, you don't phone. All right, go ahead. Hey, John, you want to do one with me? You want to do one? Okay, come on up here. Okay, so uh, go like this. Thank you. 